watching the documentary, I see that in my life, God is pulling me to think a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my husband traveled to Malaysia a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, and he came back different and I didn't understand it. He went to a um, fellowship where what we would normally see, he didn't see. And so it was like different for him. Like even the, uh, the offering bucket was not in the sanctuary. The pastor did not believe in speaking about that in the sanctuary. The bucket was actually outside of the sanctuary. And one of the things that he said, the pastor said is, if you want to give, you can give. You know what giving is about. I don't have to teach on that again. Just go ahead and give. You know what you should and should not do. You, that's between you and God. Mm -hmm. Whereas when some of us attend, it's a little different. That makes sense. Um, where a lot of times, I know when I was little, I felt like all it was, was about was money. When my husband and I went through our challenge financially and I could not give, I felt so bad. I felt like I was the worst Christian on the planet. I felt like, oh my God, God is just mad with me. He's angry. And so that actual documentary made me think about all these feelings I once had before. Um, it challenges you to think about the word of God. What are you reading in the word and how does the word counteract some of the things we do and we call it Christ when it's actually culture? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you think about that? No, I think I think, that's, I think um, just even outside of the documentary, because I know I don't know if anyone else has watched it outside of us. Um, there are all areas in our life where we can grow deeper in understanding of the gospel and how um, to read the word. How yeah. are we interpreting it and what does application look like um, for me? I, you know, I was, I was, I was also raised in a church, uh, not a specific denomination, but very much traditional. Yeah. So, you know, and this is probably going to step on somebody's toes, but like, like, even like with, like you said, like with the tithing, with, um, the speak traditional, the traditional views of speaking in tongues, um, yes. as far as like speaking in tongues equate salvation yeah. or not speaking in tongues, something you ain't really saved um misuse of the gifts of the spirit like a lot of that so that was just my yeah. norm that was my norm yeah. until I got to honestly to grad school um and I got honestly God just and he, he grew me very much during that time because I was apart and separate from the typical traditions that I was a part of um right. even, not late I would say let later years of undergrad but even even outside of that because even some ministries that I were part of that I look back now mm -hmm. there was a lot of stuff done that were, that wasn't biblical um but I'll say once I moved to Maryland I was surrounded I was surrounded around like a whole different subset of believers like right. believers that I hadn't been around before and they prescribed to the reformed theology but I had never heard of like no reformed theology in my mind I'm like look if you get just a Christian you go Christian why right. we got to have a you know reform I didn't even know what reform was right but even without me knowing what reformed was I saw it in action in their lives yeah. so I saw the gospel not only just known in their mind like like knowledge wise they knew the word but it was the application and a loving of god that came from that knowledge which made me be like okay it's something to the way that they're in relationship with god through his word right and the fruit of it right and so um my husband and i we start i mean i didn't know but the whole time we were going to a reformed church anyway mm -hmm. um and yeah i grew I grew, mm -hmm. I say in those years when I went, went, when we were in Maryland, I grew in understanding of the word and right. in interpretation and how to read the Bible, not just by like intellectually, but by the spirit of God. Like, am I reading this, this, this beautiful book about the story of redemption based off of who Tierra is, how right. Tierra fits in here, um, versus what does this say about God? And in light of what I'm reading and what this says about God, what does that make me? Because my identity is directly tied to him. Right. And so I, and I had, it was literally, I had to practice how to read the word that way because 
I, that's not how I was taught. Like, like I wasn't taught in the pool pit that way. If anything, all the messages were topical based regarding, and not nothing's not not that anything is solely wrong with topical based things, but topical based just based on me and the word, not anything about God. I didn't know the gospel. I did. I realized that I was like, if somebody was like, Tierra, explain the gospel to me. Right. I couldn't explain it. <laughs> like it was just like, right. well, you know, Jesus died. <laughs> you know, he he resurrected. Thank Jesus. But I didn't know the story from Genesis to Revelation. Why right. it was the synopsis of the gospel, so the important. core of my life. Correct. You know, and so that time was really rich because I I really delved into like by the grace of God, like his word and had people around me, like teaching me and discipling me in the word. And I mean, I started seeing the, pr- I started seeing the way that I praised and worshiped him through my life be reflective of the word because it was, I was rightly seen, beginning to rightly see him, not right. based off of what Tierra is with God or how God yeah. loved me so much that he didn't, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. God is completely independent of me and he don't need me. Exactly. I realized that recognizing you know the holiness of him and it's purely by grace alone through faith like in christ alone that i am saved right i'm secure in myself because then it go back to that salvation like i was also raised you can lose your salvation um wow. I've, I've i didn't have that one but wow <laughs> yeah you can lose your salvation like your salvation <laughs> And it's still being preached very heavily, especially in my area. Like, it's still, it's still being preached very heavily. And so I think watching the documentary, it affirmed what I was learning, but it also challenged me in regards to um, more so what I easily fall prey to. Like, my besetting sin is attributing works to salvation rather than, yeah. okay, so my faith faith grace alone Mm -hmm. god has given me the grace to even want to be in relationship with him like understanding that not only was i under the wrath of god but even if i had the capacity to get to him i was dead in my sins point blank so it was nothing but by his grace that i'm purely able to even desire a relationship with him right and so that was freely given from him Mm -hmm. and so me being able to be in relationship with him is by faith, by grace, through five, by grace, by faith, mm-hmm. by grace, through faith. And then the works part is an, is a produce. It's a product of relationship when you're in relationship with God. Cause that's not how I grew up. It was like, well, you need to be doing duh, 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 duh. And it was, and so that's, I was very works based. I was very, um, cause that's that famous scripture, right? Faith without works is dead. Isn't that that scripture? But nobody explains what those works are. Those works are not the things you're doing. The works that God is requiring of us is relationship. He's requiring us to come to him. So he's not saying work, go do this. I had somebody tell me that before. They were like, you know, I know you want to be, when I was in school, as a matter of fact, as a speech pathologist, getting ready to be that. Somebody said, well, you know, you got to do this and that and this and that, and God can do the rest. Well, wait, hold up. I'm confused. So he needs me to do this, that, this, and that, and then he can do the rest. No, he can do the rest before I even do anything else. And so they hit me with the scripture. And like you, I, I would think when we was in school, I was in my 30s, mm-hmm. right? And almost in my 40s. And I'm still having this battle as well, like you. You know, faith without works, you know, is you, if you don't work, then there's no faith. There's no, how does that work? And I think that affected me even because I think we talked about this before when it came to depression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because when I battled depression, I was told I didn't have enough faith, and that's why I had mm-hmm. depression. Now here I am. You <laughs> didn't. You don't know this, but I've tried to commit suicide before. So now you're telling me this, and so now I'm an adult thinking that I should die because I'm not good enough for God because I'm depressed or I have to battle depression. Why? Why am I not? When I speak it into existence, it's not happening in my life. So I'm not good enough. God is not helping me. God is, God doesn't love me because I'm not doing those things. I'm not uh, speaking it to an existence and it's not working for me. And God was like, hold up, girl. Now, unlike you, I didn't have, I'm not part of a reformed church or anything. I just love how the Holy Spirit works. He started working with me on my own, Mm -hmm. you know, in quiet time, things like he would say to me, you have to humble yourself 
and know that I'm God. You have to humble, gain some humility because it's pride and it's arrogance to think that you can command me to do anything. Yeah. And when he started talking to me like that, I started saying, okay, let me go deeper. And I started reading more. And I do have a friend who is reformed or goes to a reformed church. And she started talking to me about some things, but I did not understand a lot of things. I think my, my battle was one of the things you said was tongue speaking mm -hmm. because I do have the gift of tongues. And I definitely believe that. But I also found scripture that said, everybody is not gifted to speak in tongues. Whoa. Whoa. So that's not everybody's gift. Because if you go into Corinthians, it talks about the different gifts. And it says some this, mm -hmm. some that, some this, some that. It does not say everybody this. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. But the way I grew up, everybody should be able to do the same thing. And I remember when I left the church that I was a part of, God had me look back and reflect. He said, okay, now if everybody's in this church and everybody's speaking in tongues, when a person walks off the street and comes into the sanctuary, how will they know what's going on? Yeah. There are people who are not churched. They are unchurched. The unchurched doesn't understand not speaking in tongues. They don't understand speaking in tongues. And so God was showing me, he was like, something's out of order when everybody's doing the same thing in the building. But the unchurched walks in and because they don't feel like they fit in, they walk right back out. Mm -hmm. So now they didn't even get an opportunity to gain Christ because they just felt like, what is everybody doing? Oh my God. You know? And then you'll hear people say, well, that's because they're not part of your tribe. Huh? Mm -hmm. How does that sound? They're not a part of our tribe. We are the body of Christ. We are supposed to be those that are the light. We are supposed to be the ones that are teaching are standing. Like you said, um, like Christ. So, yeah. And you guys, please chime in as well. I see the typing down below. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all want to talk, hey. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was like kind of like the dialogue. I was like, oh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, um, no, I can relate to a lot of things um, you all are speaking on because um, I grew up in an apostolic, and I think I wasn't an uh, apostolic church, but I didn't really know. I guess the different rules and in that church it was you had to speak in tongues mm -hmm. and I remember um and if I'm not mistaken in their theology it's you if you don't speak in tongues you don't go to heaven oh. so and but I, I didn't even know all that so when I went to undergrad it was um I mean it no I think I when okay when I went to undergrad and I decided I wanted to get closer to God that was what I sought out like I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and evidenced by speaking in tongues and that's like not I mean I wanted a relationship with God but that's what I sought out I was like that's gonna be the proof that mm -hmm. God loves me and he's and he um filled me up type thing so uh, but you all are speaking on some good stuff um I want to say oh Hold on. Sorry. Um, there was another thing that I wanted to mention. Um, oh, um, about the depression and stuff when um my dad passed and even just with grad school was a very, very rough time for me. Um, it was um I was like, I'm just a weak Christian. Like because I'm struggling, you shouldn't doubt God, you shouldn't question anything. Um, there was just like so much going on and just figuring out who I was and who God was in my life. And um, I didn't have, I actually did not, I never was able to connect with the church or had a mentor. So it was like, I was out there by myself and um, I had no one to lean on where um, it was just like, um, I feel like I was just out there to the wolves. So even just with that point with, um, I guess, speaking on depression and speaking on, um, if you're not doing the works and I was working, I'm talking about, I was trying to fast. I was trying to pray. <laughs> and because I wasn't getting any results or God asked my prayer or any relief or even feeling God's presence, I was like, you know, I was like, okay, it's a wilderness season, but three months turned into a year and I was like, okay, what's going on God? Yeah. And it, it sent me into depression because of, I was like, I don't know what is going on here. And 
people would just tell me, you need to pray more. You need to read more. You need to fast more. And I was exhausted. I was wearing my own self out. It was to the point where at one point I was actually studying my Bible more than my books. And I mean, and I did very, I actually did exceedingly well in grad school, but that was because I love counseling and healing. (laughs) But the fact is, um, it was a strain. It was an absolute strain. And I was like, well, I'm doing all this work, but you know, I just felt like I was just failing altogether as a Christian. So that's all I want to share. But, (laughs) but yeah, this is good stuff. (laughs) I think I was in the same place as you, Jessica, with that. Um, Here I am. I'm a mother of four, a wife. Um, My husband was an assistant pastor at the time. And depression had me in such a place that I would go home and drink. But Mm -hmm. I'm right back to the church on Sunday and I am doing everything I'm supposed to do. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm praying for others, using the gift things that God has given me in the church, speaking into people's lives, but I'm broken. And I felt like I would come to the building and no one saw me broken. Mm -hmm. No one could ever, with all the prophecy that was going on in the building, and I do not negate the gifts of the spirit, I don't. Mm -hmm. But with all of those things that was going on in the church, I was broken and no one would look at me and say that. But what they would say is, Pastor Prophetess Tanya, I need you to do this. Pastor Uh Prophetess Tanya, I need you to do that. But here I am broken and I go back to my house again and I'm feeling horrible because I've fallen back into that thing that I'm comfortable with and that's drinking because it it eased my mind. I wouldn't even pick up my word. I'm drinking instead. And my family has a history of alcoholism. Mm. So here goes the enemy playing that game with me and I'm thrusted over here. And God had to start letting me see that when people would say to me, like I said before, you don't have enough faith. God said, hold up, what? You don't have enough who? So the same way I'm speaking into other people's lives, God started getting me quiet enough where I could hear him speaking that whisper. And he would talk into my spirit and say, oh, you have faith. You have faith because you walked up and let me know that you want to be a part of me. You have faith because you continue to come to me. What you need to do is let go of what people are saying to you and realize it's about me. It's like what Tierra said earlier. It's a relationship. Exactly. I taught relationship. I was taught you got saved. Now you work. I wasn't taught you, you're, you, now you're saved. Here's the relationship and here's Christ. Let me teach you about, let me disciple you yeah. about Christ. I never had discipleship. I'm now, <laughs> I'm 46 and I'm now in a discipleship class. Oh, wow. I am now in a discipleship class at the church I'm going to, where we talk about Christ. We talk about salvation. What does salvation mean? What does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to uh live out a walk in front of people what does that mean see i thought it meant that i had to prophesy to everybody i saw Mm -hmm. i thought it meant i had to lay hands on everybody i saw and then i realized that's not what it is and i'm still learning i mean i'm listening to tiara and i'm just so because i know her in grad school and i know her you know with that walk so um i'm proud of her because i can hear that change and I'm still learning. So it's always good to listen to other, have other people that you can reason with. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause when she asked me to watch that mo- uh, documentary, I was like, whoa, why me? You know? And then I sat down and I said, okay, Holy Spirit, there's a reason you want me to watch this. And so I watched it with a reasonable heart, not one that was haughty towards God. That's another thing. We get so caught up in what we think God or who God should be. We become mm-hmm. haughty and prideful. Mm-hmm. Because then it becomes about my denomination or my situation. So that was good. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing. Anybody yeah. else want to share? Yeah, I think that discipleship component is so fundamental and basic Christianity. And it's the common step that's oftentimes skipped. Mm-hmm. Um, or the or what discipleship is, it's not it's just like, okay, just come over here and we're going to fast and we're going to pray. And because right. I, I didn't get discipled. Like I, I, like it wasn't, I won't say undergrad because Jessica, I met Jessica in undergrad and okay. God used her tremendously as far as like exposing me to God and exposing yeah. me to the fact that, wait, so we, people actually can actually live this thing out. Like they actually wow. really walking this thing out. Right. And then it was like another, and then after that, it was like, okay, I need to, I need to go deeper, but mm-hmm. it was, it wasn't until really I got to Maryland and I saw other people walking where I was like, okay, so 
let me walk with you real quick, (laughs) you know? And even now, like I seek deeper discipleship because I think that that we are always learning. Like until we are with Jesus, we will always be learning about him and we will always be learning about ourselves through him. So there's a never ending cycle of learning that we can, you know, that we can grow in. But that discipleship is so fundamental because like you said, oftentimes we're taught, I know I personally was taught, like you said, okay, you're saved. Now I'm expecting all of these works to flow through, Mm -hmm. but not understanding that it's through the relationship with Christ. Right. It's through the relationship with God through Jesus that the works come. They come from right relationship, right perception of God and right perception of myself and people. And so, and, and sanctification is a process. It's not this all of a sudden we all glorified and we just all doing it right. Like right. it is a constant, we are constantly being sanctified until we go be with Jesus. Mm-hmm. So that component, I think even in the churches now, um, I know my churches, they're re- getting really adamant about like discipleship, but I know growing up, that was not a key component and the word was not a key component. Nope. So it wasn't big on like it wasn't being on like do you actually know what this bible says and i know oftentimes a lot of the ways that i slipped up was because it was secondhand christianity i didn't know the bible yeah i may have went to church every sunday i may have went to all the vacation bible schools but it was literally i'm hearing this and i'm just going to accept because you're in that pulpit that you are absolutely right and then that's what it is Mm -hmm. and so all of those traditional views i just embraced because okay church is supposed to be you know my mind about church okay that's jesus area so Whatever I'm getting in this Jesus area must be right. And it wasn't until I started actually reading the Bible for myself that I'm like, this is blatantly wrong. Like, I can't even, like, if anybody, even if you don't know Jesus, and you read it, and it's like, well, that was like blatant. Like, you, if I would have just opened, you know, the word, but I wasn't taught to open the word. I wasn't taught um, to love it, to cherish it, that it is Jesus. It's, it's one of the fundamental ways that we gain relationship and we develop relationship with, with God. It, it wasn't, the Bible wasn't taught that way. It just seemed like this big old book of rules that I don't want to touch anyway. Cause I think it's this big old book of rules that I can't right. do. That I can't do. Right. And so that's like, like God has just put it on my heart just the past couple of years, the love, the love for his word, mm-hmm. like, and then also the desire for other women to love his word yeah. because he tells us to to honor him and worship him with our mind body and spirit but i think sometimes i know for me i underestimated the mind yeah. that mind part mm-hmm. and the mind part for me is knowing like me spending time in the word knowing what he's even promising right. knowing who he says he is mm-hmm. via his word so that through the knowing of him i can have a right perception and a right view of him so that the relationship develops rightly. So a lot of, a lot of, you know, previous parts of relationship, it was like, I just thought he was just this guy sitting up on the throne, just throwing lightning bolts down every time I sin or every time I messed up. I had no idea what Ephesians talked about. I had no idea what Philippians talked about. I had no idea the grace that was provided for me right. in the word, right. the provisions that Christ had did for me on the cross. Like, yeah, every Easter Sunday, we go with our Easter dresses and I have put up, right. and, you know, everything but we didn't know what it really what no, the, like, the, the, the resurrection of jesus christ really meant we I, I, I didn't know like what that really what that really meant until way to way later and yeah. so it's like my heart is is just like jesus this is life changing because knowing the word having right relationship with christ is is transformative because that was another thing it was like I'm going to these churches, but these people are the same. These same people I see on the pews is the people I see on Thursday night. I felt about that. Like, what is the difference? Like, there was no form of, like, holiness. Right. It was right. no form of holiness. So it was just like, well, I guess this is just what it is. Right. But the, I didn't see any, trans, like, any transform. Transformation. Yeah. I didn't, even yeah. in my family, because my family full of pastors, preachers, Da, 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 da. But when they came home, they were mean. They were <laughs> you know? Like they weren't what I'm thinking this whole Jesus person is supposed to be. Right. And so it wasn't until like I said, I started walking with people and I saw I saw him transforming people. And then I also saw him transforming me. Like you saying Tasha, it's like, man, 
No, before I would have really, I would have, this would have went all the way left. Like, and there's still many areas where it's still going left, but there are other areas that are going right. And I'm like, when anyone asks me, like, how do I know God is real? That is the number one thing. It's like, he changed me and he is constantly changing me. Like there is evidence in my heart that he exists Mm -hmm. outside of all of creation and his word. It's like, he's changing me. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing else because there were things even when I wasn't following him that I didn't like about myself that I wanted to change, whether it was my attitude, whether it was my temperance. And I, I just had no control. Like I had no control. I was dead in my sins and I just gravitated towards whatever pleased my flesh. Right. But now that I look back, I'm like, no, he really did, like can you say, some heart surgery. Like he really yeah. he did something in me that changed me and he did I couldn't have done it. Right. So what can I blame it on? Like who can I give credit to? Right. And the word, it's just like the emphasis of like the word and not in a, a, a legalistic way. No, very much so a relational way. Because it's not, that it, it's not that it's important to get into your word just so you can check it off. It's that that's the, the you are knowing, that is like that meeting time. Right. It is that meeting opportunity. Just like if you sit down and you, you invest in another relationship, it's that meeting time. And of course we grow in it in how we read, when we, all of that stuff is sanctification at its finest, but it's so important to know it for ourselves so that when we hear things, one about our God, he said, my sheep know my voice. That's good. But what is his voice? Right. Outside of what you're hearing preached outside of what sermons you, you know, He's like, no, my sheep know me. Right. Like they know me. Intimate. Yes, it's an intimacy there. It's an intimacy there. And I have found his word. Like it is opening up and has been opening up in such a way that it's like, I don't know how I want to do this. I, I'm like, he's just really revealing himself. And I was like, it's a knowing of him because it's like, nah that's not jesus or even with thoughts racing through my head or in my heart i'm like no i can i can i can do what paul says as far as like casting those thoughts and imagination down sometimes not all the time but right sometimes (laughs) and because i know his voice i'm like no that's not my jesus and i know that's not my jesus because i got some one-on-one with him right like some intimate intimacy with him and i know again my my heart's desire that's why it's, it's so heavy in like women and women around the word is because as it transforms us, it transforms our households. Yes. As it transforms our households, it transforms the entirety of the church. Right. And as it transforms the church, it transforms the world. So it's like, it got to start here first. Like, I need to love your, like, love your word. I, I, I need to know your word, you know, and who you are. And before it can, you know, give well, you other, elsewhere. You can't give out until you are changed. Mm-hmm. that's what you're that's what i'm hearing you say we have to learn how to get into his word and to rightfully divide that word of truth learn and when we don't do that when we don't learn when we don't take that time i think that's do you think that's kind of like a pride thing i was taught this i hear this so i know it i don't need to know no more i know for me it was it was a combination of a couple things it was pride it was laziness mm-hmm. it was just much easier for me just to hear somebody tell yeah. me what the word said yeah. then for me to get into it some of it was condemnation because I felt like for me what I saw the bible as I didn't see it as a vessel used to get to know my god I saw it as the ten commandments I saw it as the mosaic oh. law I yeah. saw it that's that's all I saw it with so already the stuff I'm struggling with anyway I don't need nothing to hit like the, to, to push it I already know I'm struggling. I don't need an extra to push it. I didn't know about, I was not raised on the grace of God. I was not raised on that's like good. redemption Ooh, so story um, of Jesus and Jesus as, with us. I wasn't, I wasn't raised on that. I was just raised on like, you don't kill, you don't steal, you don't lie, you better pay my right. parents. And uh-huh. if you do wrong, after you. <laughs> if you do wrong, he gonna get you. I yep. remember somebody told me right before I was little girl, my mother passed away when I was 16. And I remember somebody telling me that my mother died because I loved her too much. And do you know I carried that for years? 
that I killed my mom because I loved her too much. So I found that I had difficulty loving my husband and my children. Wow. Like if I love them too much, God is going to take them because he's a jealous God. That was the scripture that was used. He's a jealous God. You wow. love him too much. And so she died. And it was like, and you know, now that I am older, all I could think about, and I think Raina said it over here in the, that was deception. That was deception that had my mind clouded to the point where I did not even want to get close to God. Cause I was scared that even if I loved him, he'd do something to me. It was just, it was just mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on in here. And it's like what you said earlier, Jessica, all that had something to do with my, my depression. And Tierra, you said it great too. I didn't want to go to work. I did not. All I knew that is like you said, is that God was just, you know, he would come and he would condemn me. There was no love. There was no grace. I did not hear about grace until six years ago when I started at the church I'm in. That's when I heard about grace. Other than that, it was always works or you have to do this if you want to be blessed. You have to say that if you need to get something from God. But it was never grace that I'm his child and he loves me that much. It was never that grace. So that's, that's interesting. Like I said, I, and I'm, I'm a lot older, so whoo, that's some deep stuff. <laughs> And I like what you, um, or the question you said rather, was um, pretty much hearing from someone else and almost trying to um, speak your truth on it and taking, well, sorry, taking on what someone else said and it's like, as that's true, and then become dogmatic. Because I'm going to be honest, in, <laughs> un in, in undergrad, I was like, no, I mean, and when I say I was really in my word in undergrad, uh, like I was going through through but of course like being a newbie I was like still new to a lot of things but even if I didn't understand it, I was like well I'm standing on this word this is what it is this right. is how it is and I mean and then even um, realizing certain things um, how things are processed or how healing is uh, can hurt sometimes where um, I mm -hmm. thought that if I go to um the altar then I, I gave it all but didn't realize that okay god is still killing me in some areas i remember even i had like a uh deliverance session um and i'm gonna be honest with y'all i don't think they did nothing to me <laughs> I think it, was just, it was only just prayer and i just shared a whole bunch of stuff and that was it because literally there was nothing that happened after that and and that's why God opened up my heart for aftercare, um, deliverance aftercare, because mm -hmm. like people don't even know what sometimes happens, um, even with deliverance. And I was just like, no, this is what the word says. And I, I won't say I barely knew it for myself because, you know, it got, it served me for where I was, right. but at the same time, it, um, it definitely made me, um, definitely prideful and definitely, um, just close to what other things God could do mm -hmm. and not only other people's lives but even in my life so yeah yeah that's good I think I was in a place like that too I became very legalistic um, yeah yeah a lot of things that I had a problem with until God really started working on my own heart to deal with things I think the first time that um I really realized how legalistic I was is when God started sharing with me about a situation. I had a problem with people who were homosexual. Like I wouldn't even talk to them. I wouldn't deal with them. You know, you're cursed. That's how I felt. And I was sitting in um, my room one day and I remember the Holy Spirit saying, suppose it was someone in your family, how would you love them? And that challenge was like, whoa, what? And the Holy Spirit said, if it was someone in your family, how would you love them? And he led someone in my family to come out to me. And I was the first person they came out to. And I'm like, whoa, you know, and, um, but God is teaching me how to put legalism aside. Not to say that I'm accepting it. Or mm -hmm. accepting it. And that's not, it's, I'm learning to love people with yeah. the same grace that I was given. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm learning that I trip up every day. Every day I have an issue. And I think that's the, that's the one thing that I carry away every day with me is that I am not perfect. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I turn to God, the reason that I turn to Jesus is because he died for me once and all for my sins. But that doesn't mean that I'm walking around perfect. When I know that I've tripped, when I've known, you know, David said, 
my foot almost slipped, right? But then he said, I had to get back over here and realize that it's because of God, right? That's the same thing it should be in our life. But what happens is we do get haughty. We get haughty and prideful and think I'm saved. I, I walked up, I said my words that one time and I'm just, I'm going to heaven. But you're not thinking about all the other stuff. God did that. That wasn't you. It says that the yeah. Holy Spirit leads us. He beckons us. He calls yeah. us, right? So how can I think I can leave him out? How can I think that it's okay to not spend time with him, to not worship with him, to not give him my day, to not lay down what I want, what I think in front of him, to not ask him a question and say, God, is this what you even want for me? Is this the direction I should be going in? That's haughty. That's prideful. And I know that's one of the areas God definitely dealt with. Legalism, pride in my own heart. And I don't know about y'all. And, and anyone else that want to talk, y'all please chime in. Please do. Um, uh, the, way I, the way I was taught about Jesus and what God did was from the perspective of almost like God needed creation to worship. Oh. So he created these people. Narcissistic. Oh, yeah, in a sense, it's if I'm needed, you know, like I was not desired, but that I was needed. So for a very long time, that's kind of how I perceived whatever I did know about the gospel. It was like a romantic love story about Tierra and how God created me mm. to worship him. And he need, you know, almost like he needed, needed me to worship him and all of those type things. And what I quickly learned <laughs> was that I am utterly sinful. And I, and I don't think, and I think some, sometimes people don't want to talk about it so much if someone deals in condemnation, but I think there's a beauty about making that a realization for us is that we are, our nature, it's sinful, like born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Like because of the fall, because of what happened in the Garden of Eden, Everybody from henceforth outside of Jesus Christ, utterly sinful, couldn't please God, didn't want to please God, just all rebellious against God. And, and I needed him to do what he did. Because yeah. if not, I would have stayed under the wrath of God and I would have been completely still dead in my sins. Right. Right. Because, like this love story, like, like if I don't know, I can't, I can't even, that I think about it, it's even hard to explain because I'm like, <laughs> that's just so off. But it was just like, you know, Jesus, he, he loved me. And, you know, he died for my sins, but not really understanding, like, no, he died for my sins because I was going to hell. Right. <laughs> he died for my sins right. because I was going to be eternally separated right. from him. Not right. like, I'm just, you know, living this fairy tale life and he just saved me from some imagination. Like, no, it was a real reality. Right. I needed to be saved. And even now, having his righteousness hold <laughs> on me, like, I am still, I still struggle with things daily. Even as a, even as a, like a humility type thing, because it's like, that's good. How can someone who falls short constantly? And don't get me wrong, all this stuff I'm talking about is not perfectly, not perfect, not perfect. But a, a constant a reminder, even how Paul talks uh, talks about that 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 thorn in his side, like some that that besetting sin that I gotta constantly lay before Jesus. It keeps you in a position that you want are right. in constant, in constant, <laughs> that you are in need of something. Like you need right. Jesus. He don't need you. Like he said, he had a rock to right. him. So understanding that I also, it helps me to also understand how precious it is for him to have chose me and for him to adopt me into his family. And because he didn't need me. Right. He foreknew me and he chose me. Right to be adopted as a daughter into his family. Right. Like it was nothing that I did, nothing that I would ever do. It was simply, he elected me. Right. And to know what he elected me from, I think is important. Like, you know, important for people to know, like, and not this bashing, preaching hell, but the realization that the biggest part of hell is not the fire and the brimstone, it's the eternal separation from God. Right. Because right. I always have this, this general grace, whether you believe or whether you don't believe. And yeah. so the biggest separation, and Christ shows it when he was on the cross, because he was like, Abba, Father, like, that was like hell for him. That right. was him taking on that sin, the sins and being right. separated from whole burden. Like how, and even, because even if you think about it, like 
he was with Jesus. I mean, he was with God, is God from beginning of time. Yeah. And for that moment in time, he separated mm. for our sins. He took upon that eternal, he took upon that separation. So to know what he saved us from, it's like, it's, it's humbling even in itself, especially when I know I fall short, especially when I get convicted of something that I thought I said, or, you know, my motives, like, right. because I, to know that he's like, no, I got you. It's covered. It's covered. Right. Now let me deal with you in that area. Yeah. So that you can be an image bearer of me so that other people can see me and glorify me. Right. And so just to know, I know I'm in need, like, like you said, not this pride, prideful, self-righteous notion that because I'm a Christian now that ain't no repentance with it. Like John the Baptist, that's all he preached was repentance. Yeah. Like repenting. Yeah. And to know that even as a believer, I'm still called to a life of repentance is humbling but it is also like uber like grateful because even in my current condition where I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. I'm still perfectly accepted. I'm still perfectly right. loved, like eternally accepted, eternally adopted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think, I think that that's important for people to know, like, for instance, God just convicted me. What was, it was just yesterday. God convicted me <laughs> yesterday <laughs> of my interactions with my immediate family, like my brothers and my sisters, okay. and how it's easier for me to share the gospel with other people, but for some reason there was a, a block there. Like it's harder for me to do that with them. And it was a sense of like familiarity, like, okay, this is who they know me as. This is how they know me. So I, you just kind of leave it there. Mm -hmm. But yesterday God had really put it on my heart to talk to my youngest brother. And I had been praying for him and God really was, a guy had really put him on like, okay, you, you know, you've been praying, but you ain't said nothing to him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so yesterday it was so beautiful, y'all. Like I called it, it was so, it was, I'm not gonna lie, it was awkward as heck at first, because honestly, that's, that's not typically the dynamic of our relationship. Mm -hmm. But I called him and I was just like, you know, God, you know, I believe he really put it on my heart. That he, I just want to talk to you about Jesus. You got a minute. He was like, yeah. And the first question I asked him, which why going back to the gospel, it showed me how important it is. I, I asked him, I was like, you know, what does it mean to be a Christian? And of course he said the stereotypical things, oh, going to church. And I expected that because I know we're, how we were raised. So I expected that he said that. And I said, well, you know, do you, have you ever heard of the gospel? He was like, you know, I've heard of it, but nobody has ever sat down and talked to me about it. Wow. And so I'm thinking like, it goes back to that scripture. It says, how will they know unless they are told or unless the gospel is preached? Yeah. So I was like, wow. So I sat there and I explained, cause it was even thing. And, and you, that's why it's so important not to even overestimate people, even yeah. things like the story from the garden of Eden, like just sharing with him, the God, like the gospel, the overall gospel from Genesis to, to revelation and the re and it, it, it was crazy because it was all out for some things that I even assumed that he would know. Mm -hmm. It was like, he didn't even know. Yeah. He, wow. he did. And then it made me think of like, how many other people do I walk around with, do life with that don't know the gospel? Because the, the gospel is the centrality of our faith. It is what allows us to be firm in, in, in knowing Christ. It's, allowed, it's what allows us to persevere. And just sharing that with him and just, you know, praying with him. But that stuck with me that he said that. He was like, I heard people say it, but no one ever sat down and actually told me. And my brother's what? He's 22 now. He was like, nobody has ever told me like what it was. And I thought about it. I was like, dang, that was me too. I can say, yeah, the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, but what is the gospel? <laughs> Of Jesus Christ. What right. is it and why is it important? Right. It's important for me to know because I was explaining to him about sin. Like to because I had to even do that. Like I asked him, like, what is sin? And he really he, you know, he gave the like, oh, you know, doing things that ain't but even understanding the gravity of sin. Like right. sin is death. It is right. ultimate death. Like right. knowing the like understanding those concepts. And it was just like, Jesus, I need to talk more. I need to talk to my people more. I need to give me a heart for, especially my siblings, even starting off there. Right. And not assuming that they just want to hear it somewhere else. 
that they just going to learn it somewhere else. We're hoping, because that's what it was. I'm hoping that they're going to learn. They get it from somewhere. Yeah, I'm hoping they're going to get it. It's like it challenges that relationship because you're not familiar with speaking to them about it. Mm -hmm. That's where we get complacent. Yeah, We're complacent, so we don't talk to the people around us. I think um, Jessica and Crystal are having a nice conversation over here. They're not talking <laughs> on this mic, though. No, <laughs> well, Crystal put it up there, so I'll stick to that. <laughs> it is emotionalism. It is mm -hmm. not teaching. Like I said, I in the last six years, I am part of a teaching ministry. Mm -hmm. My pastor yeah. literally breaks down teaching about the word of God, about the gospel, about discipleship. I think that my healing came from depression when I started at the ministry I'm in now. My pastor mm -hmm. spoke about being depressed. He, he actually has, um, he's a teacher by nature. So he does bullet bulletins. And in the bulletin, you know, I don't know if, uh, you remember Dr. Uh, Harris Brown, Tiara? Mm -hmm. How she would make us have something that we'd have to do to work so that we could take it, <laughs> so that we could take it with us and remember what we did. Well, that's how my pastor teaches. He'll put up the bulletin, but there'll be a line in what he's teaching about, and you have to fill the word in. So mm -hmm. now you take it back with you. And on my, I have, um, he's, we have Bible app, on the Bible version app, the U version on the, our, um, on that our church puts up the bulletin. So I remember we went away to a um, conference with leaders and they wanted to say something about pastor. And I had every one of his messages on the U version. And they asked me, why do you have that? Because for once I realized I had to learn for myself because he would say, you can't be delivered because I'm teaching you. Right. You have to take it now and apply the word of God to your life. And I remember telling the leaders, what I love about pastor is he's not just telling you, believe what I say. He's saying, take what I've given you and use it. I stand up here for 45 minutes to an hour every Sunday. There's no way you can't take that home and use that in your life. And what I started doing is I started using that in regards to depression. And yeah. I remember pastor said, I was depressed. I'm not perfect. I have never seen a pastor admit on the pulpit that they have problems. That blew my mind. I was like, did he just say he was depressed? He also ministered that I didn't know how to give. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to give. I did not give. I told my wife, don't give. I'm standing there looking at him like, what? And he was like, God had to teach me certain things. And I'm going, I've never seen a pastor open up like this. But when he was saying what he did not do, he took us through the word of God mm -hmm. to show us what the word says. And he always said that. Yeah. We were talking about reading a book in our discipleship class, and he reminded us. He said, um, he said to our first lady, I know you like that book, but please remember that that's still not the word of God. That is a book still written by a man who is fallible. So I need you to, when, that's, when, something, when you read something out of that, go back to the word and weigh it over there. He said that about um, the movie. Um, what is that movie about the end times? I forgot the name of it. Uh, Kirk, Kirk, the little Kirk camera left behind. About. Left behind, yeah, left yeah. behind. That's it. And I remember him saying, "Left behind is not biblical. <laughs> that is <laughs> not <laughs> the Bible." Do you know I was <laughs> raised on Left Behind? Like they <laughs> had a youth ministry. We yes. had us in the back watching every Left Behind. I'm thinking, Lord, if I, if, 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 even if I don't get raptured, if you get raptured, that's going to freak me out. Your clothes just going to be Left Behind. Right, right. Oh, I was 23 I when I first watched that because I got saved when I was 23. And I remember Left Behind was the end thing. Yeah. Believe Left Behind. This is what happened. And when my pastor um, that I currently attend church at, when he said that, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> no, you just like... Oh, so yeah, it's not okay. You know, you have to go back and check yourself. Like, all right, I wanted to share this scripture because Tiara touched on it a couple of times. She touched on it when she said she didn't know what Ephesians said, and then she was talking about faith. But Ephesians 2 8 and 9 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast of it. Mm -hmm. So it is That's not good. by your doing. It was by grace because Tierra said it a couple of times. She said, he didn't choose me because I was perfect and I was the, the, the little twinkling superstar. No, I was going to hell in a handbasket. 
And so he chose me. He said, come out, child. But then in the midst of that saying, come out, he wants me now as he changes my heart and gives me a new heart nature to now walk out his life before others. And that means even by being truthful about the things that we have gone through, but not drawing people to us, but using what we've been through to point them right back to Christ. You know, um, right. I think a lot of times we listen to messages and the messages are follow Paul, follow Peter, mm -hmm. follow uh, what David did, follow Daniel. Well, we're supposed to be taking what we read in the scripture and pointing that situation, taking that situation and pointing it right back to Christ. How did what David did, how did that point back to Christ? How did that point back to what he did for us? How did that point back to why he did what he did for us? So we're not asking no questions. I love Jackie Hill Perry because she asks this question all the time. She says, when you read the Bible, ask these questions. How, what, when, where, why? Uh-huh. Read the Bible like that. How, what, when, where, why? She put it, she, she put it more um, plain for me than I've heard my pastor say it too. He always says, when you read in the words, get in there with it. I didn't know what that meant. But he said, get in the story. Sit there and read it as though you're right there in that time. So then you'll have the who, what, when, where, and why. The why? full context. The full context of it. Go back and write down who was the actress or who was, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who was this person? Who was that person? Why was that person doing that? Ask those questions. And if you don't understand, put a question mark. And seek time with the Holy Spirit and say, okay, Lord, I didn't understand that part of the word. Why was that so? Mm -hmm. Who are you talking to? And what I do I need to do? Say that again, Tierra. And I say, I think that goes right back to the whole discipleship and right learning of the word because I think people think it's passive. They think of reading a word more passively. Like, I'm just going to read it and, you know, whatever I get, I, I get in a sense of like, whatever, however I interpret it, this is what it is. Right. Not knowing, like, literally, we are instructed to learn how to rightly divide mm -hmm. the word, mm -hmm. meaning that we have some preconceived notions about the word so when we go into it sometimes we just come up with our own interpretation but we have to learn how to rightly divide the word like even knowing the cultural context behind what they're what they're talking about knowing who the writer is exactly like, who is he writing to you right. know so that when you're reading i literally have to have check marks as i'm reading mm -hmm. like i get get past a certain passage i stop i'm like okay think about what i just read like for for instance, I'm I'm going through the book of Luke right now, right? Mm -hmm. So learning who was Luke? He was this Gentile doctor. Okay, so that means something. I need to remember that he was a Gentile doctor. Who was he writing to? This guy named the Theophilus. Theophilus was this Roman uh, official, uh, mm -hmm. and the purpose of the letter was that he wrote to Theophilus was to make sure to help make sure that Theophilus would be firm in his faith. So mm -hmm. I know that that's the purpose, but that's the context of the letter. He's writing to Theophilus a Christian to make sure that to help him be firm in his faith so that he can be confident in what he knows about Jesus. Uh, yeah. Right. And yeah. so when I go into it and I'm starting to read the genealogy of Christ and I'm starting to read like about John the Baptist and I'm reading about Jesus's birth, his prophecy, the birth and all that stuff. I'm reading it in the context. Why would a Christian need to notice to be firm in their faith? Mm. Why, why would, cause that's the point of the, this letter. <laughs> why, why would right. someone need to know this? What and I always start off with like, and it's kind of the same thing. Like, Jack, it's a lot of people use the same type of way that they read it, but like, I start off with wag and wham. Wag, right. what is this? About God? What, right. what about God did I just read? What does that mean? The context of knowing, knowing this to be firm in my faith. This is because that's what I that's the point of why I'm reading this to be firm in my faith, right? And then out of what I learned about God, what does this say about me, right? What is how is my identity tied about? what about God? Like even a simple story as the prophecy of, um, John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before the reason why I went to Luke was because honestly it was a book that I overlooked. It was like, Oh, okay. Luke. I, I, Cause I, I have the, I have the, like, I, sometimes I, I have that notion of going to more mainstream books like Romans or, right. or Philippians. And it was like, no, go somewhere you don't want to go. Right. And I was like, well, I don't really heard nothing about Luke. I'm pretty sure he, like, he's probably important. You know, he got a whole book. Right. Right. <laughs> so, and the reason, and then I looked and I said, okay, the reason why I kind of veered away from Luke is because Luke is a historical narrative. It's basically 
full of stories from the beginning of Jesus to the end of Jesus. Like, yeah. And so I never thought I could get anything out of that. Like just out of a story. Like right. Romans is more concrete. It's theology is bang, 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 bang. What I'm gonna get out of this story about an angel Gabriel going to tell Mary that she about to have a baby. Right. Like what I'm gonna get from God. But when I tell you, man, he's been opening it up so much, like how he's in all of that. Like even just the story of the prophecy when Gabriel went to Zechariah about John and he went to Mary about Jesus. Like what I learned in those, I'm like, God is strategic. He like, there is nothing that he does not have planned or foreknew and that he is not a liar. Yeah. Zechariah didn't believe Gabriel. He went silent. Yep. And at the end of that passage, Zachar- uh, Gabriel was like, but it's still going to happen in God's timing. Exactly. And the same thing with Mary. I, like I'm seeing a constant theme that God is not a liar. And he values us believing that he is faithful. He values that. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, just reading those stories before, it would have been just like, okay, we all know Mary was a virgin. Okay. Right. Right. So she had Jesus, but I didn't see God in it. I didn't see the reason why I needed to know that. And so learning how to read the word correctly and rightly divide the word by the spirit of God Mm -hmm. is so much more enriching and fulfilling. And that's how, that's where that intimacy can also be drawn from because it's like, now I'm not reading the Bible just as a, you know, some stories or what, or, or let me just go here for Tierra's satisfaction. Let me, you know spot read right what's the error of satisfaction but it's like mm. no Jeez. let me start from the beginning and answer this book that and that was just my conviction read this book just don't go to, just read the book from beginning to end so you can have complete context and read it looking for me not looking for a solution to your problem not looking for it for a solution even to your sin right. look at it read it looking for me mm. where do you see me Good. Who am I in this story? And so I'm saying it's a very intentional, it's not, it's not passive. Because like, I have to stop and say, okay, Tierra, go back. What did that say about God? Because if not, I'll keep reading and it'll just be a story. It'll just be another yeah. story. It'll be reading. Just be another scripture. Right. It'll just be reading. Mm-hmm. I think that's important because you said something about Luke. Um, I used to think the same way about that book because it's stories. I have a book that I don't like too. It's Revelations. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's such right. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yes, man. I've been avoiding I nobody. I think that's like the, the Christian anti book. Right. 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 Now, that, now, the book of Revelations, what's so funny is I read it, but I did like what you said. I ain't stop and think about it. I was like, I got it out the way. It's done. Yes. But what I realized is that even when it comes to like Luke, if you look at it, it points back to the Old Testament. The mm-hmm. Old Testament points back to it. Yeah. Even if we read Revelations, Revelation points back to the Old Testament. This is why I say people can't get rid of the Old Testament. Don't just throw it away. Mm-hmm. I have a friend that she literally bought the Bible written in Hebrew. And she bought a Torah. She bought what they call the Sefer. And she actually reads the Sefer along with the 66 books. Mm-hmm. Of the Bible. So like she was telling me the other day, she said, Tanya, if you just read and you hear the begats, 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 when you read it officially in the Hebrew, you kind of understand the begats, the begats, the begats, the begats, the begats. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa, that's deep. You know, <laughs> so if we look at one, it points to the other. We can't negate them and get rid of them. So Luke points back to where he was testified of in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And then you come back to Luke and it's like, whoa, so, like you said, it tells the truth because Look how long ago God spoke about him over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He pointed to himself back over here to remind us that I already said this. Oh, it's man. going to happen in my time, but I already said this. Same thing with Revelation. So I'm going to get like you, Tierra, and I'm going to sit okay. down and I'm going to wag Revelations. I'm going to wag it. I'm, I'm going to wag it and I'm going to read it and I'm going I'm to read it for God. My husband says this all the time. He says, I've learned to not read to preach anymore. Mm-hmm. That's deep. Because a lot of times we're taught to read the word to teach something or to preach yeah. something or to talk about something. And he looked at me and said, honey, I've learned to read, not to preach something. I've learned to read, like you said, to find God in it, to find what he's saying to me. It goes back to even the music he listens to. He's like, honey, I'm very careful about what I listen to. If the music is promoting me, 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 I'm not listening to it, even if it got a Christian stamp on it. Mm-hmm. Cause I want to know how is it pointing to Christ? What is it saying to me about God? What is it saying to me about what God is doing 
out here now? Where is his essence? in the song right so if it's all pointing to i need to feel better mm -hmm. i gotta get up tomorrow i gotta do this he was like i'm not saying it's wrong what i'm saying is it's not edifying christ yeah so if the father's not edified then i don't know is that something that i need to listen to right now so you know i love having those conversations with my husband it's 10 19 you guys want to keep going are you guys getting something out of this yeah this is good yeah i think reason you know is fun i'm so glad Tierra invited us to be a part yeah we got to y'all got to do this again i i think we do because i don't think we even like dug deep we just touched the surface t yeah i agree <laughs> this might be that um women's group you always talking about whoop, whoop. Uh, that's exactly what i was thinking i was like go ahead here let hey, the lord draw hey, you out now <laughs> jump into the deep okay. <laughs> saying, i can high note for you deep <laughs> you are sing darling <laughs> and we can collaborate because it could be you know this could be a form of that discipleship we talk about yeah because um, like for real y'all like and i'm learning so much just again just going back to god's word and one not rushing it either because y'all i done been in loop for about a month and a half now and i'm just getting in chapter five uh. And I and that's one thing he was teaching me as well. Take your time. Like what you what you in a what you in a rush for? <laughs> like take 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 your time. Cause that's why I was so anxious. I was like, I'm gonna build a Bible plan. Read five chapters a day <laughs> and by the end of the week I would have got through it. And he's like, uh-uh, that ain't how it works. Because that goes back me. to the old cultural thought. Mm -hmm. Now we're supposed to read the Bible in the whole year. Yeah. So you know all 66 books. Do y'all know? Y'all remember? I don't know who went through this, but my uncle will wake me up every day during the summer to give him Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. I mean, every day during the summer. And all I want to do is slap him. <laughs> it did not make me want to know the word. All I knew is that when he touched me, I want to punch him in his eye. You know? But that's what we were taught. We were taught that we're supposed to know it like clockwork, get through it real fast. Um, that's that you know that goes to cultural thinking and and i think that's the big one of the biggest things is because even just from picking off of, uh, what tiara was saying it's just like i've i've been learning like how do i really digest this and um it's what's her name patricia washington she's like an entrepreneur but she's um a christian entrepreneur or she's she speaks about her faith and her platform and I remember her saying, like, um, no more, um, you, you're trying to get revelation off of snacks of the word and not having meals. Mm -hmm. And um, that just, like, really stuck with me because I know, I mean, and, I, and there was a time where I was, um, you know, you would see those encouraging posts and stuff like that. But first off, that's not even a snack. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's just like, but people, they, they you know, they'll see a quote on quote on social media or you know they'll um see something somewhere or maybe read something really quick and like you said like be able to like oh I know that scripture right. but did you digest it though and um and d how did you apply it to your life and what does it look oh, like good. showing up in your life and and even um, when you all were talking about discipleship and teaching I asked God like okay but God, how do um how do I apply this to my life and then also um w whether it's a troubled area or whether it's an area that I just need to strengthen myself in I'm like okay God sh first off what is your character and mm -hmm. let me see your character but also how should I show up in the world and treat people differently um and and even see how you are revealing yourself in my everyday life especially since I feel like I've been leaning on God even stronger being a therapist just because I'm like, well, first off, I don't have none of the answers and I'll try to have the answers, but it's just such a application of God is the holy and, and, um, uh, perfect counselor. So that's what I need to be mimicking. That's what I need to, my, my vision and my insight should be. So, um, so yeah, this is good. Like, but it's, I'm like, God, help me digest it because mm -hmm. you can see something. It, it's, it, it just sit on my heart and it's not in my heart. 
Right. So, but I think you said it just now. You are you are already in that vein of truth where you're trying to see even your what you do in the natural. You're saying, Lord, I want it to apply to you. Right. That's how you apply it. When something's um, enlightened to you, when God is speaking to you about something, you take it and you apply it in your personal life. You know, I know for me as a speech therapist, I can't walk into everybody's home because I do home health and pray over them. But uh, I try to demonstrate who he is from what I know of him. And I remember one day I was leaving a person's house and they said to me, who are you? Now, no. I, I've been sitting here for the past 30 minutes. I'm a therapist. What are you talking about? We just met. And grandma was like, but who are you? And I said, I, you know, I expressed who I was again. And she said, no, what do you do? I'm the speech therapist. I just left up out of here doing therapy with your grandkid. And she said, okay, when you leave being a speech therapist, what do you do? Oh, I said, I'm a believer in Christ. I said, and that's who I am. My name is Tanya. I have four kids and a husband, and I'm a believer in Christ. She said, see, that's what I knew. She said, I saw the light. Mm. She said, just by how you treated my grandbaby, I saw a difference. She said, my grandson doesn't sit with anyone, and he sat in your lap. Oh, well. By the way, I knew something was different. So I said that to say, you're already applying it. See, because what we tend to do is we'll take the word of God, what we learn, and we only use it on Sunday. Mm. We'll only use it on Wednesday. God's trying to teach us how to walk this thing out every day of the week every hour and every second, even when we're at the grocery store. And that does not mean that sometimes our foot doesn't almost slip. See, because when I was unsaved, I liked to fight. So God knew that about me. So when you yeah, say me, I can see that. I can see that. When he saved oh, me, York he brought me over here. He said, don't be a coward now. What I need you to do is still like to fight, but it's how you fight. Exactly. Which partners? How you fighting? Are you going to be one that's going to cower down when the world tells you that I'm not real? Are you going to be that one who won't stand up and stand for truth when right. it's known that I'm in the midst? So that's how you apply it. You take it and apply it to your everyday life. My best friend is a Muslim. And if I told you this, I tried to be some everything. I wanted to be a Buddhist. I wanted to be a Muslim because they dress, I love how they dress. They dress fine. Oh, <laughs> I love Muslim clothes and head wraps and stuff. I really do. And um, me and her can talk. We can talk about something. But the one thing I always that I respect about her is being a Muslim is not just something she do during Ramadan. It's not just something she do on their holy day. She lives it out. And that was something she said to me. She said, Tanya, as a Christian, one of the things I question is, I don't see you guys live it every day of the week. You live it on Sunday. You live it on Wednesday. Maybe on Tuesday but you have to live it out. She said, my, even my food is planned through what I believe, which I understand. Not to say I want to be that legalistic and go all the way there, but I get what she's saying. Yeah. I can understand the reason. She's saying that when I go to, when she goes to her God, this, so why I have, listen, our God is powerful. So I should, I should speak to him about things in my life. God, is this the job you want me to take? Is, is this where you have me to go? Is this your will for me? And we fail to do that. So you are already applying it because you just said it. You said, I say to God, this. <laughs> you know, now it may not happen the way you want, but you're asking him humbly. You're coming to him. You know, I remember being taught that, oh, we are sons of God. So you can go to God. You don't approach the king a certain way. Esther did not just go into the king's quarters. That's not what she was allowed to do. We have to know how to approach God in such a way to remember, like Tierra said, it's by grace, it's by love when we approach. It's a heart matter. It's not a logical matter. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Well, it's 10.30. I won't keep y'all because I can be talking. I can talk all night. Huh? You hear me? I just wanted to introduce myself. I know I was late. Hey. <laughs> so I didn't get the beginning. How long was y'all on? I mean, if you don't mind, how long was y'all on before I got on? Mm. We didn't oh, even a few minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm Kania. I'm not Raina. Raina oh, is. Okay, so who's Raina? Raina is my youngest child. I have four kids too. Gotcha. <laughs> she used this computer earlier. <laughs> her okay. work. And, yeah. 
in her, her Zoom and look for teachers because we have to stay on that one. <laughs> um, but this is great. I love everything y'all was saying. And yeah, I, 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 I it would have been great to do it on Facebook too because I feel like we would have, I mean, look, we would have been able to reach more people. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, this makes it so that so many people could, uh, you know, interact with each other. So this is just right. another platform. Yeah. I loved everything y'all yeah, said and um I don't know what y'all was saying about depression before I got on but I struggled with depression like heavily 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 and God brought me out of that mm -hmm. and um marriage, yeah I mean really you name it I probably went through it you know mm -hmm. and here I love what you were saying about you studying Luke and you know just getting in the word I'm reading um Acts right now. I'm sorry, my daughter is trying to be really kind and cleaning my <laughs> table, but you know I have my my chaos a certain way. <laughs> she just jacking it all up. But <laughs> I love you. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and I wrote that I was taking notes. That, but you and you said another word. You said wag and ran. Wag. What about God? And then what about me? So what is like interpretation as far as like understanding comprehension? What is it saying? And then what is it saying about God? And then in light of what is this saying about God, what does this mean for me? Okay. Yeah. That is awesome. I never heard that before, but yeah. That's I never heard that either. Me either. I don't like that. Yeah. I'm going to use it. I'm going to do that with revelations. <laughs> what is this saying about me? Yeah, I'm curious to see what it's saying about me. Revelation. Woo -woo. Uh -oh. <laughs> and maybe that could be our challenge for everybody. Let's just try that with reading and see how, what's different about approaching the word in that different way. Okay, uh, I'm going to type uh, it out. Uh, yeah, right. type it out. And Tiara, can you, um, I don't know if I, I don't think I caught the full title, but whatever you sent to, um, is it type Anna? Tanya? Tanya. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Tanya. I'm looking at your. <laughs> it's it's uh, Tanya. My mother was country, lived in New York. You can't okay. make it Tanya for a New Yorker. I'm Tanya. <laughs> okay. Now you're fine. <laughs> oh, uh, can you put down the title of the, I guess, the next Netflix? Oh, the documentary. Um, yeah, because I, 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 I don't think I've seen that, and I think that would be cool for me to watch. Yeah. No, it's super, super rich. Yeah, they have two different ones. Kenny, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Did you have it? Were you done? Or did you have? No, no, no. You said that. that what was it? it? Was on Hulu? Is it? It's not on Netflix. It's on Prime. It's on Amazon. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. But, but okay. Tanya, you said it's on Netflix. I thought it was on Netflix, but I know I, I think I purchased it on Prime. But when I pull up my Netflix, it shows up. So. Okay. Well, okay. I know on Prime, like they have it's two, and they're they're long. It's well, the first one is like two hours. Mm -hmm. It's called um American Gospel. Christ alone and it's about okay. it's really rich it's really rich um, okay. and that it's but it does cost it's like $3.99 on Amazon oh, and then the second one I have not watched the second one it's okay. called gospel I forgot what it was yeah I can, I'll send it out okay oh, okay. okay. it's on YouTube it's on YouTube it is oh America. it's his one hour version Okay, see, so it's two it's hours. Two hours. So oh, maybe it's, it's a full uh, version. Um, it, no, it's it's what's the word? I think it's a channel. So just, I mean, tier, could you just confirm if that's the right one you saw? I don't know if you can see. That look right. Yeah, that's um Nabil. He passed away. Okay, so yeah. Stomach cancer. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's 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 really it's deep. It's really good. It's, it, it talks about, sorry, Tier, I didn't mean to do that, but I thought about something. It talks about the fact that um, we don't understand what suffering is mm -hmm. because it's almost like we think that, you know, like Tiara said, it's just all, you know, God chose me because, you know, I'm Tinkerbell, so he just loves me. And, you know, and, and they were talking about the fact, and I don't want to give too much detail, but they were talking about how the different disciples, one was boiled upside down and this one was tortured and Stephen was stoned. So is that not still love? It, did God still not love them? Because in this day and time, we think love is only the blessings. Love is only the fact that I have a new car, new house, new pair of shoes and a new outfit. Uh, 
And now you speaking on something right there, um, because that has been, I, I think God is about drilled that into my brain because I, I want to say for um, a good while and I, and I grew up not being my mom's favorite mm. and it really affected the way I saw myself and did not realize how it related to me to God. And I felt like God could bless or favor everybody but me mm. and it was like and I mean and yeah the materialistic things but it was just like even with with other things like um oh well God he he created this and opened doors for this person or that and it can never happen for me and it was like and I had to literally and looking through the word it um what was it he he said that Solomon and uh John the Baptist was blessed Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. like, and, and I had to digest that and process it. Like, just like you were just saying, but sorry, that yeah, is, no, yeah, that's, that, that's like one of the things that got, and dealing with comparison, that's one of, my, yeah. one of the biggest things that I constantly deal with. Right. So it's just like, whoo, yeah. So I dealt yeah, with it too, because I have a birthmark on my face. Um, and at 15, I used to, well, younger than that, I used to try to scrub it with a Brillo pad. I used to try to scrub it off, <clears throat> but I always had that, that issue of competition mm. because I never felt that I could be blessed because mm. somebody could do it better than me or they're prettier than me. Or, and I was a black sheep cause I wasn't raised by my mother. So I was kind of a black sheep too, for different things in my life. So birthmark starting with that one, I was called Petey the dog and oh, well. little rascals. So I was pretty, treated really bad. But let me tell you how God is good. Cause even in that, I had a little guy in my class and he picked me to be his girlfriend. We didn't know what that meant in third grade, but there was a little boy that would tease me because of my birthmark and he would take matches and light them and throw them in my desk. And the little boy that called himself my, my boyfriend beat him up. So he was my little protector. And I always sit down and think about how God <laughs> took care of me back then. That was third grade. The little things that we think stop us, he's already in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. But we don't even see it because we miss him. We miss God because we're only looking at ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, that's some deep stuff. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Tierra, what are we going to do this again? <laughs> <laughs> she said she got to get through Luke. Y'all <laughs> uh, don't want to wait for Luke because it ain't no I sure. all year. So uh, y'all might not want to wait till after Luke. I'm taking my precious time with Luke. I'm I'm gonna get what I can get. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll send out. You know what? If y'all can just um, somebody need to tell us how to do this on live first. I know y'all. <laughs> right. Come over here, fix on Facebook, please. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we find gotta... it. Yeah, we gotta get together and figure it figure it out. It's, I don't know if it's some in our settings or what, but it wouldn't allow me to add yeah it up there. And then she tried it and then it wouldn't allow her. So it was just like we spent 45 minutes just trying to do that. I know. So <laughs> yeah, well we and then we're I, all, I, I would go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I would I do think live would uh it would reach more people because even when I got yeah. into live, it was some people that was getting it that I was like yeah. Where you come from? I didn't expect for you, <laughs> but you're getting live, aunt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so no, I can see, I can see the fruit from that, and we can, I'll be praying about that as well. See how we can get it up there, figure out what it's. I don't know if it's something in the settings or something, because I was yeah. able to add you, Jessica, but I wasn't able to to do it with her. Well, yeah, definitely. definitely you um, do it, huh? Get on YouTube. And they'll tell you how to do it. Somebody gonna tell you how to do it. We, that's what we were doing. We, we were doing we, that we, while we were on live. <laughs> we were trying to figure it out. Swipe to the right. Right. You know that, it, I don't know. It, I think it's something in, in either her settings or my settings that oh, we yeah. allow to, to add each to add each other. So I don't. Oh. But um. So yeah, I guess just the overall that the conclusion is just god help us to be women who love your word yes amen um that we but to help us to love you and to love people yes god so um i'm gonna pray out yeah i'm gonna send out 
I'm gonna send out the the name of the documentary as well as if y'all can just in the chat just send me your email addresses and maybe I can keep in touch with y'all there or group me. I don't know what y'all prefer. It's like like a means of communication. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, um, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Yes. You have once again proven yourself merciful and graceful. Yes, thank you for loving us. Thank you for, before the foundation of the earth, calling us into your family. Thank yes. you for predestining even this time for us to come together to fellowship, to commune about you, over you, and through you. I just, I'm just so grateful. I'm so, so, so grateful. You have answered so many prayers just in our conversations. And I just ask that you would give us a heart to know you deeper and more intimately, God, that we know that anything good, it comes from you. The desire to work or will is all according to you. So I ask that you would give us the desire, one, to know you deeper and to even have a love and affection for your word, knowing that that's the tool that you use for us to get to know you and that you literally are your word. And I pray, Father God, that you will unpack it in such a way that we will have a deeper intimacy with you like never before, God. I pray that you will open our hearts, that you will soften our hearts, allow the word to get deep inside, that fruit will show. And in, in light of the fruit showing, Father God, others will see you and they will uh, glorify you. Um, I just thank you for these women in their respective lives. I just pray that you will continue to watch over them, to protect them, Father God. Continue to reveal yourself to them. Um, and I just, I just give you the glory again for this time. I give you the glory for their lives. Um, and yeah, I, I just thank you. And so it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Amen, ladies. Thank y'all for y'all time. This is a this is a blessing to me. I love, this is my thing right here, y'all. This is my, this. It's your thing. This is my, mm -hmm. thing. this is where I come a lot at. I love women. Amen. Person around God's word. So y'all, you know, y'all go share the wealth. Amen. Like y'all got something, y'all can share it. Even if it's a type of thing where you reading with somebody and y'all read together and, and challenge yourself to, to dig in in a different, in a different way. Um, yeah. All right. Amen. Nice seeing all of you that I don't know. Good night to everyone I do. Love you, ladies. Nice, nice seeing you. Bye. Bye bye.